Good morning to everyone. Boker Tov. You know, uh, last night I was by uh, Seudat Hodaya. And, uh, and uh, you know, we were talking a little bit about, about those days that we are about to enter, right? Tonight we have Rosh Chodesh. We're entering to Adar and Mishanichnas Adar. Marbim Besimcha. Once you enter to the month of Adar, we have to increase our Simcha, correct? So uh, my father-in-law here present told me a very interesting question. He said, listen, halachically, we have one month in the year that we have to do the opposite. We have to be less happy than all the rest of the year. Which month it is? The month of Av. Mishanichnas Av, Mema'atim Simcha. So the question is, how do we reduce the Simcha? So we have alachot for it, right? Yeah, we start by not buying things of Shehayanu, then by not, uh, uh, using, uh, uh, not having weddings, not using uh, uh, clean, clean garments. And, uh, you know, we're making actions to low up the happiness. Which actions do we do to increase the happiness in the month of Adar? There is no mitzvot. Do we have any mitzvah to increase those days of, of, uh, of Adar to increase the Simcha. So really, there are some poskim that are saying, yes, you know what, it's good to make Seuda, but there is no obligation. Rabotai, the answer is, and I was thinking after about an answer, you know, sadness, sadness, it's connected to the things that are happening to us. When is a person sad? When things are going on or wrong, right? This guy lost money. The other guy lost a certain type of relationship. The other guy had a problem. more you have issues around you, it can bring you to sadness. Rabotai, but happiness is the only thing that if, if it is depending on something external, it will never be a true and real happiness. If the happiness that you're going to get is going to be because of something that you have to do, because of something that you're going to buy, because it's something that you're going to get, this happiness is not going to be real. And once that thing will go out, your happiness will be done. That's uh, unfortunately the reason why so many people, you know, are not finding the happiness because they think happiness is when I will reach to, when I will get to have this. Right? How a guy told me once, he told me, listen, when I was a teenager, my dream was to get my driving license. That was my dream. He used to live in Israel. In Israel, to get a driving license is a headache. Yeah? So I was learning and learning and preparing myself. I say to myself, the day that I will get my driving license, I will be the most happy person in, life, in the world. And I got my driving license. I was jumping of joy. Of joy. How much time do you think that this joy rests on me? Huh? Maybe one week max. Not more than that. After one week, I have a driving license, but I have to do something with it, right? I need a car now. All right, so let's look for a car. And he told me, listen, I was looking for a car, and he didn't have money, so hey, he looks for the most cheap car, you know. He get a car, you know, from the age of, uh, right, uh, Noah, Noah Vedorotav. You know, 1990, something like that. The car wasn't even moving. But the guy was, he got the car, and he was extremely happy. One more time, for how long? One hour. Uh, one week, he passed next to the friends. He's driving. He have all the friends in. The car is not even moving, but it's okay. You know, after one week, halas. And like that, Rabotai, we're like this guy, each one of us. Our happiness is depending on something. You know why Mishanichnas Adar Marbim Besimcha? Marbim Besimcha cannot be depending on something. I cannot tell you, do this to be happy. Got to be from you. The happiness got to come from your own way of, th- of, of looking at the things. A person who is looking at the things in a certain way, he can have happiness. Let me tell you. So last night I was in this Tzudat Hodaya. And after we finished the shiur, one of the family members told me, you know why we're making this Tzudat Hodaya? His mother, the, uh, she, she is the one that is sick, she's still connected to oxygen. So they told me, 
that uh, a year ago, the medical issue of her, this lady started to go down worse and worse and worse and worse until she got something in the heart that was blocking. I don't know what it was exactly. And the doctor said, we got to make something, a special uh, a procedure, very urgent, okay? And it's a very delicate procedure. We have to make like a type of uh, electricity to the heart to remove that thing that is blocking the heart. Rabotai, they told me we were, all the family came together with uh, their mother to the hospital to make the procedure. Said so they got it into the hospital and the doctors and everything was so slow. And uh, you know, there were hours, the mother was fasting and uh, the time arrived and she's not, she's not being called. Half an hour after, one hour after, two hours after, and the mother is not being called. The daughters told me last night, they started to, pr to push, you know, come on, what's going on over here? You told us a certain hour, look what time it is. And the lady that she is uh, uh, sick, she told to her daughters, do me a favor, don't press doctors. Call akavale tova. I'm telling you a story that I heard it yesterday, Mamash, from that lady. Everything is in Shemaim. You know what they told me? At the end, they enter in, they, they, they brought her in, and after two minutes, the doctor goes out. The doctor goes out. The family members, they were, they were very scared. I mean, the doctor goes out after two minutes, but I mean, none. what happened after? He says, no, 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 we just check out. And, we, and uh, before making the procedure, we have the obligation to recheck the whole thing. She's not needing any more the procedure. Everything is okay. What do you mean everything is okay? Yeah, we don't know what happened exactly, but uh, that, uh, that thing that was blocking, it's not anymore there. I said, well, one second, doctor. At the beginning of the day, you, you did a checkup, right? And it was. So yes, it was. But right now we redo it and, it, and there was nothing in. So look what it is. If I was complaining and I was pushing and pushing and pushing and they were accepting me before, right? At the time that I wanted to be accepted, but me none. They will do the same, uh, the same procedures that they plan to. But now what? At the moment that a person understands that Boreo Olam is managing the things, Rabotai, this is the concept of emuna, and this is the concept of simcha. You know how Mishanichna Sadar Marbim be simcha? Knowing that even at the moments that are looking dark moments, if we understand that Borei Olam is with us, Imo Anochi Betzara, then you can be able to see also the light inside the darkness. It's amazing that Dafka, the month of Adar, right, that we have to increase the simcha, is basically the reason why, because of Purim. What happened on Purim? Rabotai, we never had such a terrible tragedy about to happen like on Purim. All the Jewish nation was under one kingdom. There is nowhere to, 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 to escape. When there was the Holocaust, people escaped. If it is to Israel, if it is to the U.S., and they got saved. But that, uh, at that time, there was nowhere to escape. One kingdom, one, one decision, one day. All the Jewish people who died. Kids, adults, men, women, doesn't matter who. What are you going to do? Nothing. You cannot do anything. Everything looks so dark. And at that moment, if I'm Israel connected to Amunah, then you're going to see the light outside. So someone told me a big chidush. Interesting. Tell me, you know, Esther, right? Esther Amalka, so Mordechai, Wearing levush sack, wearing this, this type of garments that are, that are showing uh, 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 sadness. And she got mad at, Mo, uh, at Mordechai. Why are you wearing this type of, of, of garments? How you call it? Sack walk. Sack walk? Sack cloth. Cloth. Sack cloth. Why are you wearing it? So I heard the Hidush. Why Esther was so upset? He says, you know why? Because if Mordechai is in sadness, when there is sadness, there is no salvation. Cannot be salvation if there is atzvut, if there is sadness. And he said, you know when the salvation came? Look what happened. 
instead of wanting to, do, to, uh, to have this, uh, this small party, right? With Haman and Mordechai, correct? The first day came, and then instead he's asking, do me a favor, let's push it to one more day. Why are you pushing it for one more day? Say it today. Well, what was the difference between the first day and the second day? Esther saw Haman happy. She said, if this Rasha is happy, it's very hard to be able to break a decree. I have to wait until it will be sad. And Mishamayim, after that day, happened the whole story that he, uh, Haman had to take Mordechai and they throw him whatever they throw. And he was sad. Oh, you're coming sad now. Now there is a power to break up the decree. Rabotai, yes, that's how it works. A person who is being in sadness, Chaz Shalom, he cannot see the Yeshua, he cannot see the salvation. But if at the moment that we will increase in Simcha, Mishen Nichnas Adar Marbim Besimcha, then La Yehudim Aita Ora Besimcha Vetason Vikar. Then there is a connection in between your happiness and the salvation that Borei Olam will give to each one of us. So Rabotai, let's take this opportunity. The opportunity of this month of increasing Simcha and then hoping that Borei Olam will give salvation. How we increase on Simcha? Being more connected and understanding that all what Borei Olam does is for, all, uh, for our own good. Just to finish up, I just want to tell you that, uh, that uh, in Eretz Israel there was a soldier that told me this story up. He said that uh, when he was uh, in the army, so he had to make, they, they, they took them, the whole, the whole unit, they took them to the north, uh, to, to the south, I'm sorry. Near, uh, back then, yeah, Gaza wasn't Gaza. Gaza was a whole mixture. <coughs> it was Arabs and Jews. So they were taken to, to that area of Gaza. And all of a sudden, one of the generals decided to make a special, special uh, 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 exercise like there is a war right now going on. Now the soldier told me, listen, we weren't prepared. No one told us before. And this general wanted to do it right away. So we came and he said, guys, right now we're doing a special exercise. Everybody has to put himself in, a, in the correct spot. And yalla, we start. Now Rabotai exercise has been in the army. It's not yalla, let's just uh, run. No, all type of, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, like type of bombs that are not real bombs, but it's making the noise and lights and stuff. The do and the soldier told me we started to do it and it was a disaster. The whole plan was that Kivyachot, there is a whole bunch of terrorist guys that are coming inside a yeshuv, right, a settlement, and they are trying to control a school. That was the whole idea and how to, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. If Ban Minada will happen on, on real life, Chaz Shalom. So all the, he told me that all the soldiers started to complain. And they said, come on, this general, what do you, what do you think he's doing? Why do you have to bother us like that? And there, there, there was no success. They complained, they complained. Rabotai, next morning, next morning, the soldier said, we had to, uh, there was a jeep going around, you know, the area every single day to, uh, you know, to, to, to guard, to control. He said next morning, they're passing, you know, Gaza basically have water, right? So they were passing next to the water, and all of a sudden they see two dead bodies on the water. They stop the, uh, the jeep, they go, they take out these two dead bodies, and they realize those are two terrorists. What was the whole story? Yesterday, there were two terrorists that they wanted to enter to one of the Yishuvim and to make a, a Bar Minan, a terrible uh, uh, terrorist attack. What happened? They took a small boat with a guy, you know, uh, Stam, a regular Arab, and, and uh, the plan was they will, they will swim from the boat till the, uh, to, till the beach, right? And then they will, uh, they will attack. <coughs> And said so they entered to the water, and at that simultaneous moment, the army was, uh, was doing special treatment. With exercise and bombs and lights, they were sure that they catch them. They were sure that they catch them. They decided to make a U-turn and to go back to the boat. 
the guy in the boat saw that already he escaped from, you know, he escaped already, it was too far. And these two guys drowned. He said, look, what is it? We have no idea how Boreh Olam is managing the things. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu made exactly the whole situation to happen to save us. How do we say? Hashem kol goyim, kol haumim. Right? What are we saying? You goyim, I want you to praise God. Come on, a goyim is going to praise God? Shabehu kol haumim. All the nations, you should praise God. Are they going to pray and praise God? The answer is yes. You the goyim that you wanted to make us problems. You wanted to make us all type of damages. And at the last minute didn't work out. You that you know exactly what was the plan and how at the end. Borei Olam managed the whole thing to stop it. You should praise God of God to see how Borei Olam loves us and how much He cares about us. Rabotai, a person who is having this concept of, of uh, that Hashem is connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu automatically is being happy and then the Yeshua is coming. Baruch Adonai Le'olam.